All right, case one, what is the diagnosis? Crickets. And if you're wrong, it's okay. It's a safe place to be wrong. Again, I, I can, can go. go ahead. So looks like an endophytic kind of growth where it's kind of invaginating. Um, and it looks like there's maybe acantholysis. Good. And kind of looks like an expanded hair follicle. So what do you think it is? A warty dyskeratosis. Yeah, warty dyskeratoma, warty D. Because you've got the the key is that it's acantholysis and dyskeratosis. Here's the the acantholytic rounded up detached keratinocytes, and then here's the dyskeratosis, which looks kind of like plump parakeratosis is the way I think of it. The the coron and grains, and then here you can see nice acantholysis, giving you this kind of like invaginated, um, almost frond like appearance. I think. And um, and the, the key to it is that it's acantholytic and dyskeratotic, and it's in a kind of invaginated cystic lesion, usually on the face, right? So we know that there's multiple lesions that can give acantholysis and dyskeratosis, and the different way to classify them depends on their distribution clinically and their shape microscopically. So if, it's, if it looks like an invagination, or sometimes it'll look totally like a cyst, because remember, anything that's invaginated that has an opening to the surface, like a punctum, like you'd see in a... Uh, follicular cyst, epidermoid cyst, whatever. If you cut straight down the middle, you might get um, a cut through the punctum and get to see the opening of the surface. But if you cut anywhere to the side of that, you're going to just see a cyst. So this lesion sometimes looks just like a cyst rather than showing that nice connection to the surface. So if you only learn this pattern, you're going to miss ones that are going to sometimes look like this and be cystic and not have a good uh, connection. Okay, so that's case one, warty dyskeratoma.